What is happening guys? How are y'all doing? It has been an absolute long time since we've gone and done a live stream and it feels so good to be back. It's taken a little bit of time but we are finally here. Hopefully you like the new stream setup. We've got some lights and stuff happening back there. It's a bit of a change. So previously, I don't know if you've gone and watched one of the live streams, but we used to have the camera up there so you, all you could really see was the green screen. But it is a bit of a change. Hopefully you like it. What is happening guys? So um, I've seen that there's a bunch of you guys already in the chat. Hopefully it is, oh, hopefully you're having a great day, but it's also absolutely amazing to have all of you here. Let me know what you think of the new setup. I am still testing it out just to see if this is all going to work and um, if we can start cranking some more live streams hopefully soon. But there's also been a ton of shorts that I've been cranking out. What is happening guys? How are you doing? Oh, this chat is going, going nuts. How you doing Srikar? How you doing Tony? How you doing Manny? Abreu? Willies? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing Ashley? <laughs> From the other room. How you doing Zach? What's happening, Coding Salad? Pratish, how you doing? Awesome stuff. Saving for the full stack course. Yes, it is an absolute, like I sunk so many hours into that full stack course. Like it, it's quite possibly like one of the most amazing things I've done. I don't know if I told you the story behind it, but I started coding it at the start of last year. Then I ended up starting recording it at I think it was like October and I was like, I set a goal. I'm like, this is going out before Christmas. So for, I don't know, it must have been like a good two months. I was up at 5 a.m. recording from 5 a.m. till 9 a.m. before I started my job. I was cranking to get that out. Um, but hopefully if, if you, you are taking a look at it, it's absolutely amazing. Cracked a data science interview. That is so cool, Pratish. Awesome. Rakesh, please make a video on how to make a chatbot in GPT. Wait till you see what we are going to be taking a look at today. Hopefully you do like it. Partha, how you doing? David, what is happening? Skanda, how you doing? Nakabinge, what's up? What's up? Oh. IT Tech Zone, how are you doing? I have difficulty learning about data science learning coding. I'm probably going to do a bunch more like data science-y type live streams. I don't know, coming soon-ish. We'll, we'll see where that goes. Today's a little bit more focused on chat GPT. Plus, I sort of wanted to get you guys across the API. I did the short, but I want to dive a little bit deeper and tell you a little bit more about what is possible. Um, how cool is this guy as well, by the way? It's like a little um, space dude that uh, shoots out like cool lights anyway. What's happening? Um, do, 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 your videos are useful to make our project awesome. How you doing? Live from College Park. Where's MD? MD USA? I've got no idea what that is. I, I'm terrible with the US states. Ankit, how you doing? S starting a U do some auto ML libraries? I think we did do some. Dude, I won an award in my AI course. Learned some stuff from you for that one. That is amazing. Congratulations, David. That, that, is, that is absolutely sick. Hopefully, um, hopefully you guys are doing, building some amazing stuff out there. Next video should be on how to make a chatbot using custom data set. Scrape from a website. I have got some people asking about some, um, some scrapers. We'll see. I sent you an email, but I didn't reply. I'll send it through again. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll try to double check. Oh, MD equals Maryland. Awesome. I've been working on chat GPT API credit and app for myself. Currently working on implementing sta stable diffusion. That is nuts together with ChatGPT API. That is so, so cool. That is absolutely amazing, guys. All right, well, um, we'll probably come back to the chat a little bit. Why don't we get into doing a little bit of coding on ChatGPT API? Because I don't know, if you guys saw the short, there was a little bit more that is possible, but obviously in a short, you got like 60 seconds. So it's almost impossible for me to cram enough stuff into there to really get out some, some useful coding content, but it's a short. YouTube loves shorts in the moment, so we're gonna do what YouTube loves. Any good tools to summarize patent documentation? I think you could probably use ChatGPT for that. Anyway, but let, let's see if this switch over works, because there's like a whole bunch of buttons that now I need to press. All right, let's go. And we are now coding. Take a look at that. All righty. So, what we are going to be doing today is doing or diving a little bit deeper into the ChatGPT API. 
And ideally what I want to sort of get happening is just sort of show you the flow, but I'll also show you something that I built for work. And this sort of harps on with what I always say about like coding, right? Once you've learned something, don't sort of stop there. Try to take it a little bit further. Can you connect it into something else? Can you bridge it to something else? Is there more that you can do with it? And I'm going to show you where I ended up taking this because a lot of people were talking about it and everybody was like, oh, this would be great if we had it inside of X, but we don't. So I ended up building it and now it's going really, really well at work. All right, let's hydrate a little bit. My face is a little bit pink because these lights sort of like make me pink, but I mean, what? We'll live with it. All right, cool. So let's create a new text file. We are going to, uh, let's save this. So we're going to call it um, YouTube live chat. And we're going to call it, uh, create it as a Python function. Is that big enough? That's probably a little bit better. Um, okay, so what are we going to do? First things first, let's just go and establish like a baseline chat GPT API, right? So we're going to be doing this inside of VS Code. I, I normally do it inside of... Um, Jupyter, but I know that a lot of people love VS Code, so I'm like, I'm gonna make an effort to do some more stuff inside of VS Code. All right, so I've already gone and installed the OpenAI library. So if you haven't done that already, all you'd need to do is run pip install OpenAI, which will install the OpenAI library. If this particular, if you're doing it inside of Python, if you're not, if you're just using the raw API, you could just do it using CURL. So you can do that as well. I, I, I think it's CURL. Or, C-U-R-L, or that's what people call it. You never know. Okay, so pip install open API, we, uh, open AI. We can then import open AI, and then we are going to import the API key, which I've got inside of a file called API key.py. I'm not going to show you that because it's, uh, it's obviously a paid API. So then what we are going to do is we're going to go from API key, import API key. So I've got a variable from API. Uh, I think it's one word. There we go. From it, so we're going to import the API key. So basically inside of the file API key, I've got a variable called API key, which is just a string variable. So like it'd be something like inside, let me give you an example. So inside of the API key file, we've got, which is called API key.py. I've effectively got a variable called API key and it's set to like ABC, like a whole bunch of random numbers, so on and so forth. But that is basically the API key that you get from OpenAI. So if you go to uh, platform.openai. I think it's .com, you're able to go and get your API key from there. So that is a little bit of a prerequisite. I know I don't always cover prereqs, but prereqs, go get an API key. Cool. All right. So that is that. Now we don't really need that. So I'm going to push it down to the bottom, but but now what we've got is we've imported OpenAI, we've brought in our API key. What we now need to do is set our OpenAI API key. So we can go openai.api key and we're gonna set it to the API key that we've got inside of this file. So let's add some comments. So import the dependencies that we need. We are then going to set the API key API key for the service. Beautiful. And then we can go and do a little bit of generation. So this is where the OpenAI chat completion API or module comes in handy because that's where you can actually go on and basically use ChatGPT as an API. But it like there's this chat interface, which I didn't show in the short, but it, it's quite interesting in the way that it works because we can actually pass back context. So the way that I showed it in the short almost made it look like it's a back and forth type thing and you only pass through one transmission or one utterance at a time. If you've ever worked with chatbots, think of an utterance as just like you saying something. So like if I say a sentence, that would be an utterance. But you need to be able to do this back and forth if ever you're running a chatbot, right? So that's where the, the that's I'm gonna delve into that a little bit today. Okay, so what are we gonna do? So we've gone and brought in and set our API key. So let's chat. Let's chat. So then we can go open. Uh, we should create a new variable. So we're going to create a variable called output. And we're going to say openai.chat completion. Bum, 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 dot create. And then inside of here, we've got to pass through a bunch of stuff. Are you all following? Awesome. Good guys. So we're going to say model equals 
uh gpt-3.5 dash turbo oh also have you heard the news about chat gpt 3.4 i was talking to a mate about it today it is nuts one trillion parameters mind blown like it's gonna be insane how crazy that is um yeah wild okay and then we're gonna go messages believe it's messages and this is an array so actually just on that bit so i don't know if you've heard like I, I mentioned it a couple of times but um i'm releasing a free python course on courses from nick so that's like it just covers all the basics that like i wish somebody had taught me when i was getting started with coding with data science with machine learning so on and so forth so um really like i've, I've literally structured it how i would want someone to teach me and it's all going to be free on the inside of courses from nick I've got to give you guys the free discount code. So I'm definitely going to share that. I've just, I'm setting it all up. So it's going to be out in maybe takes me, it depends how long it takes me to write the emails, but I'm hoping in like the next six, five or six days, I'm going to get it out. Okay. So let's have a quick look in the chat. Nick is back. Yes. Yes. I'm back. I was giving myself a Nicholas Aeronaut haircut. It's a little bit, a little bit longish at the moment. Pegasus. Cool. Curl rhymes with girl. Is that, do they pronounce it curl? I never know, David. Try them all, including uh, start object detection. Object detection. We've got a massive tutorial on um on the channel around about that. There's probably a bunch of errors, but you gotta gotta work through. But it, it's good. Will this be on my GitHub? Definitely. The work is very mesmerizing. I changed my profession after learning. Yes, awesome. Alrighty, cool. So back to this so so far let's quickly recap so we've imported open ai we've then gone and imported our api key we have then gone and set our api key now what we're going to do is we're going to chat so think of these messages as holding the entire chat right that is what is happening here so everything gets set inside of that that messages array right so if i go and send a message we need to store it inside of that messages array so the way that we structure the messages that we pass through inside of our messages array, uh, we need to set two, or we, we pass through a list of dictionaries, right? So let me zoom in on this, right? So we've got is my head blocking that. So we've got a list here inside of that. We're going to have a dictionary and the dic each dictionary that we pass through has two keys. It has a role. And then let's just say pass for now. And it has content and the content is effectively the text. So there are three unique roles. So there's system, there's user, and there's, I think it's assistant. All right, let me explain these. So I Googled it today because I was like, what, where do these fit in? System almost allows you to give an overarching context to your chat or to chat GPT. Doesn't quite work at the moment. I Googled it and I, like, I read into it. So I think they're, they're working to improve that. So right now it's not perfect. We'll get there. A user is anything that you are saying. Assistant is what the assistant has said back. So if you want to maintain context and take out what your assistant has said and pass it back to be able to generate the next part of that conversation, we need to pass back what our assistant has said. So I'm going to show you sort of a workflow for what that looks like in a second. Okay, so initially though, I'm going to set role user. So this is going to be me. And then we're going to set content. So content, let's say... Um, I don't know, guys, give me an example. What do you want me to ask chat GPT? Context is key. I'm just starting to learn coding and your free course is just what I need. It's coming out soon, Zach. Anyone, any ideas for what we should ask chat GPT? All right, I'm just going to throw something out there. I'll wait for you guys to reply. I know there's a little bit of lag between me saying stuff and it coming out through there. Um, what i'm gonna so what temperature does water uh, uh let's enable word wrap what temperature does water boil i know that's such a simple one actually all right we'll, we'll do that one first all right so that is going to be our output right be a therapist <laughs> all right so we've actually let's be a th I asked GPT for a breakfast recommendation. I prefer that better. Um, can you give me a breakfast 
recommendation that is high in protein and delicious. I was going to say and low in carbs and fat, but that, that's definitely not what I'm aiming for at the moment. I've been running. I think I'm going to do like a, um, like a fitness challenge, like a huge run to, to raise money for a charity soon. So I'm just running at the moment and eating an absolute ton. All right, cool. So that is, that is pretty much the crux of it, guys. So we're importing the library. So import open AI. We're importing our API key. So from API key, import API key. That is, you, you can kind of skip this step and just plug in your API key as a string there, but I don't want to expose my API key to everyone. Hence why I put it inside of a separate file. We are then, this is, th this text is like the, the bulk of what you need to do now, right? So we can go and use openai.chatcompletion.create to be able to go and start generating that chat. Then what we're going to do is we're going to print this out. So print out the chat. So I'm just going to print out uh, the output for now, and I'm going to show you how to traverse the response. So that is pretty much it. So let's go and run it. Let me zoom out so you can see. So that's everything, right? All of that is everything. So if we go and select it, let's go. I started using Code Runner to be able to go and are we in? I don't have the right um, environment set. No, uh, how do we set our environment here? Oh Lord. Um, I don't know how to set it with um, with Thingo. Oh, here we go. I am in my chat GPT virtual environment. Is this... What environment is this using? Magic, Python, type checking. Uh, that should work. Uh, all right, let's just go and run it on with a console. Um, so I can go Python, YouTube. What's happening here? So Python, YouTube, live chat, that should work. Have I, oh, I haven't saved it. There we go. Let's give it a sec. I don't know why Code Runner wasn't working there. Interesting, I'm gonna have to take a look into that, but it makes your life a ton easier when it does work. So this is obviously gonna take a little while to output something. Ask chat GPT, why doesn't she love me? Control shift P. Environment. No, nah, no bueno. Let's see how long. Oh, there we go. All right, so we've got our response. But see, we need to go and traverse this. I like Code Runner. It doesn't, it was literally working like 10 minutes ago anyway. I'm going to have to go work out how to set the environment. All right, cool. So we've got our content there. So you can see that it's returning back a dictionary, this monster dictionary here. This is what we're interested in, this little bit of content. And do you see that it's returning back the role assistant? So if we ever wanted to go and pass context back to our virtual agent, we need to go and take this role. So we'd effectively go and nest in another dictionary here. So we'd have this dictionary here. We'd then go and structure another one there, so on and so forth. But for now, let's just work out how we can go and get this output, right? So we've got all of this. So I'm going to show. So if we go output, we really want the, the content, right? So if I go output, we are going to go and grab choices. So that's going to give us this dictionary. And then we want that's inside of an array there. So we just want array index vet, uh, zero. We then want to go and grab this dictionary here, which is message. And then we are going to go and grab this bit over here, which is content. Right. So we will go. So from our output value, we go grab choices, which is that bit. We're then grabbing the first value inside of our array, which is going to be this bit. We're then grabbing message, which is this bit. And then we're going to grab content, which is this bit. So then when we print it out, we should pretty print it, right? So we can still print out our output as well. Actually, we don't really need the output. Let's just go and print that. So if I go, let's go and take a look at all the code now. 
Okay, so we are now, so we've got all, everything's pretty much the same. All we're doing is we're now going and changing what we actually go and print out. So let's go and select all of this. Let's go and run it. What is the API key module? That's just something that I created. It's just a separate Python, Python. <clears throat> choking on my water it's just a separate python file that contains my api key if you didn't want to go and do that you could literally just go and pass your api key as a string here you don't need to go and do any you don't need to create a separate module for api key all right cool this is our breakfast uh result as an ai i like that it always prefixes with it as an ai language model sometimes as in like when i asked it the meaning of life it did the same so as an ai language model i do not have personal preferences but i can recommend my head's blocking that i can recommend a high i is that a h-i-g-t why is that weird i can recommend a t is delicious wait let me zoom out what is happening there I can make, uh, I can recommend a high protein breakfast is delicious, but I can recommend, a, okay, that's a little bit weird. Here is a recipe for a breakfast dish that is not only high in protein, but also tasty. Egg white omelet with spinach and mushrooms. Ingredients, three egg whites, a handful of spinach, four to five sliced mushrooms, one teaspoon of olive oil, quarter cup of feta cheese. That, I don't know, that's not all that healthy, but all right. Well, I guess there's protein in feta cheese, yeah. Instructions, heat... Oh, I'm not going to read out the instructions, but this looks all right. Instructions, heat olive oil... All right, I'm going to read it out. In heat some olive oil, add some sliced mushrooms, add spinach, whisk the egg whites until smooth, pour the egg whites into a pan, yeah, mix it all up. This egg white omelette is high in protein, low in calories, and rich in nutrients from the veggies. Now... I wonder if we could get it to calculate the nutritional content of this particular uh, recipe. So if we grabbed this now, right? So what we could do, I wish I'd still printed out the context, but anyway, that's fine. So what we could do now is we can now go and grab or create another value or another dictionary inside of our messages array. We're going to set the role to assistant because now what we're doing is we're going to pass back our context. So if I type content and then we are going to pass through the entire recipe. Boom, boom, boom. All right. So that is now my dictionary. Let's make sure I haven't screwed that up. Okay. I have, we need a comma there. That looks good. All right. Now I want to go and pass through. So let me zoom out. Right. So what I've gone and done is I've literally just gone and grabbed that big block of text. It's kind of nice printing out the raw output because then you don't have this, you don't have to mess up all your code because it, it also prints it out in like a condensed format. But basically what we're now doing is we're passing the context back to the assistant. Let me clean this up. Yeah, my OCD is going in. Actually, let's do it. So what we can then do is we can then add in another dictionary to ask something based on that context. So down the bottom here, which is tiny right now, I'm going to say, what is the nutritional value of that recipe? What is the nutritional value? Nutritional value. What are the nutritional values of that recipe? Yeah, that looks good. Let's run it. Killing me that I can't use code runner. Anyway, it doesn't matter. All right, so let's see what it says. Cheese is life, agreed Josh. Is it possible to programmatically make it remember the previous context? Yeah, so you basically just write a loop and you just take the context and pass it back into like an array. But yeah, you definitely could. But because I'm like running this sequentially and I'm like not storing, there you go. The nutritional values for the egg white omelette with spinach and mushroom. See, it's maintained context, which is so, so important, right? So it's actually maintained that, like it knows what recipe it just gave me. The nutritional values for this egg white omelette with spinach and mushrooms can vary depending on the exact ingredients you... That's so tiny. I'd, you guys got to yell at me when I'm printing stuff out too small. Nutritional values for the egg white omelette with spinach and mushrooms can vary depending on the exact ingredients used for the specific serving size however based on an approximate serving size of one omelet here is an estimated breakdown of the nutritional values 
calories 120 protein 17 grams not bad carbohydrates around four grams i wonder how like accurate that that is i mean it, it's it's sort of gone and and put a big caveat on it the nutritional values are estimates and maybe vary based on specific ingredients and serving size use does someone want to go and um go and check that nutritional content for me all right cool so but you can start to see that that is how we can go and provide context and and back and forth now somebody said get try to get it to talk like a therapist so let's get rid of this because that seems interesting so what we're going to do is we are going to add in another message or another dictionary to our messages array and i'm going to say role and here i'm going to say system and say uh content you are a professional therapist assistant right and then if we go and say um i'm having an existential crisis i don't know what to eat for dinner right so theoretically when we go and run this now it's now got context so we've told it it's a therapist assistant and we've also told it that we're having an existential crisis we want it to give us i don't know we'll see how it responds that uh, beats me um and let's actually print out the output as well so we can go and get the uh the concatenated text it's all just in a nice little format okay cool so let's go and do this let's go and run it so let me just quickly explain what I've gone and done. So we've now got two dictionaries inside of our messages array. So we've got the first one. And remember, system allows us to set context for like an overarching theme for our assistant. So like I've seen some people go, you are a useful assistant. You are a sassy assistant. I tried that before. It didn't work. Um, you can obviously go and set a whole bunch of these different types of context, so on and so forth. Um, and then our second one, remember, user is whatever we're saying. Assistant is whatever our assistant has said. So it's context, right? So we can now go and run this. I'm going to jump back over to the chat and we'll have a chat about some other stuff in a sec. But let's run this and see how we go. So we're going to run it. So I'm just going to select all my code. Let's go run. What is the number of tokens that I'm consuming with the chat GPT API? It's actually really small. So like I think for I worked it out for a million tokens. Don't quote me on this, but I think for like a million tokens or something around that, it worked out to be like $2. And I was like, I can live with that. All right, take a look. So here's our response here. So starting from here, it's understandable to feel overwhelmed when it comes to me. I mean, it sounds like a therapist. It's understandable to feel overwhelmed when it comes to making decisions, even the seemingly small ones like what to have for dinner. Here's some tips that might help you. Consider your dietary preferences, look for inspiration, plan ahead, Keep it. This feels like one of those blog posts that you find on like those, like the Live Strong blog or something. Remember, there is no right answer, so on and so forth. But take a look. We've got a response. Now, let's say we just grab this. And rather than us getting all of that, let's say I just wanted a response. So I could then go and say, let's add in another role. And then I could say, uh, we, this is what the assistant has responded with. And then we can create a content key, pass that in. So I'm just, uh, kills me when it doesn't do this. All right, so get rid of that. Let's just make it a multi-line string. Okay, that looks promising. We need a comma there, head's not blocking it. And then what we can do Grab this, uh, no, wait, grab this and just say, uh, user, can you just tell me what to eat? Eat. Boom. Oh, I've set a control. So, like, I've set, um, this is me speaking to Nikki. So, like, I ended up setting like a billing limit of like a hundred bucks just in case, because, like, I, some, you never know what I'd get up to. Um, so if I went and set this, so let's go and run it now. So let's see if it just tells us what to eat. Go 
drum roll. Take a look. We've got our response. Unfortunately, I cannot tell you exactly. You know what? I'm sort of getting the vibe that it is a little bit more therapist -y, like rather than like just full being um, like pure chatbot, it is being like kind of calming and it's, it's kind of understanding sort of the vibe. Cannot tell you exactly what to eat for dinner. It ultimately depends on your personal preferences. However, here are some suggestions you can consider. I'm eating burgers tonight. Like I'm eating like a giant double. Anyway, but all right. Grilled chicken with a side salad and roasted vegetables. Surf fried vegetables with tofu served over rice or noodles. Baked salmon with roasted potatoes and green beans. Lentil soup, quinoa bowl, spaghetti, grilled steak. Remember, it's essential to choose a meal that will provide your body with the nutrients it needs and that you will enjoy. Don't be afraid to experiment with different ingredients and flavors to create a meal that satisfies both your taste buds and nutritional needs. There you go. There's your response to the potential existential crisis. Alrighty, let's jump back and have a quick chat. Um, and then we got an announcement. I know. Let's talk about that. Um, so we need to go here. Yeah. So many buttons I got to click to be able to just go and transition from there to there. Anyway, we got like a ton of comments. I didn't even get managed to go through all of these, but oh wow, okay. All righty. Um, where are we? I was trying to. I mean, we we really went down the rabbit hole with this breakfast recommendation. Like initially, it was just going to be the odd comment, but uh, we yeah we really exploded that one. Is it possible to train it with custom data? I, I don't think you can find Trudin GPT or Chad GPT or GPT 3.5 Turbo yet. So um, when you go to the documentation on the site, it mentions that fine tuning isn't available yet. Breakfast indeed. Ask Chad GPT, why doesn't she love me? We'll do that one in a second. Um, what a coincidence. I was actually in the middle of watching reinforcement. Yes, reinforcement learning, sweet. How to choose a career based on your personality. Ooh, I like that one. Cheese is life. Where is S in breakfast? Did I not drop an S? Oh Lord, my bad. <laughs> um, is it possible to programmatically make it remember the previous context? Yeah, you could, you would ideally just have like a state um, array and you would just store everything. You'd store the entire conversation. So when I do it with Watson Assistant, which I'm gonna show you soon, um, you would typically maintain that state. So it's called maintaining state. So you take the state and you would be passing through that backwards and forwards. Can you make a website to automatically summarize the papers in archive? And I believe if I do make that, that I'm sure that paper that will go viral. Like imagine there's a website that just summarizes every research paper, specifically in ML, because it's it's just wild right now. That I think that'd um, that'd go off. So um, yeah, it's been maybe. Who knows? We'll see where 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 my future startups go. Um, why is this taking much time? In my case, the response is definitely not this slow. I think it was because the first time I was running it. So you can see it was a little bit faster now. Oh, we got a ton. Either newer version learns from the previous version of Chatbeat GPTs. For example, everyone has tried the 2 plus 2 equals 5. Could Chat GPT think that is really fun? I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what happens with GPT-4 because it's a ton more parameters, right? So like I think GPT-3 was like 175 billion this is going to be like 1 trillion or something, like something nuts. So at least that's what I saw when I was Googling it today. It was kind of crazy where, where to think that's going, Kevin. It's happening, coding salad, cheating detection system. How much I, could you show how much you consumed in the tutorial? Let me go and see that. I don't know if it'll pop up, but let me, let me, let's go and take a look to see if like it shows in my billing. Don't steal my credit card. Alrighty, so before we do that though, I've got an announcement to make. Guys, make sure you go and sign up to NVIDIA GTC. Let me hide myself because now I... All right, now I'm here to sign up to go in ahead and sign up to NVIDIA GTC. Use the link on the page just to ensure that um, at least people know that I've referred a couple of you guys onto that. And the reason that you should go on ahead and do that is I'm giving away a GPU. So this is um, a 3080 Ti, but I'm actually going to be giving away a 4080 Founders Edition. They're super rare and I reckon they'll, they'll, it'll just look sick. Um, I haven't, like I've got the box. The box is literally just over there in my kitchen. 
but it's massive and I don't want to go and open it up because I'm going to be sending it to one of you guys. So um, make sure you go and sign up. And then once you've gone and attended some sessions, all I need you to do is drop the screenshot at this forms link and I'll be making a draw. So it doesn't matter where you live, um, just enter and I'll I'll do my best to get 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 the GP to or the GPU to you if you do win. Um, I'm hoping all of you guys uh, use it and manage to, to leverage it. I should probably drop the link in the chat rather than just putting it in here. So here you can go. This is the sign up. Boom. Sign up here. And then over here, shoot me screenshots here. Boom. All right, cool. Let's go and take a look at how much compute I've gone and used for that. Let's see if I can bring it up. I'm just bringing it up on this screen because I have no idea how to get to this again. Uh, it is. I remember seeing it. All right, cool. Got it. So this is how much I've used. So like one cent. Like, and I've been playing with it for, for longer than today. So still relatively cheap. Um, yep, the, the giveaway is an international giveaway. So um, we'll, we'll see. I don't know how that's going to work out, but sign up. Well, I'll, I'm sure I can work it out. Um, but yeah, so one cent. So like relatively cheap to go in ahead and use it. Um, kind of cool. Alrighty, but I also wanted to show you what I've been doing with it. So this is where Nikki's virtual assistant comes in. So... A bunch of people were, were talking about getting this running and this is showing you a little bit of the insight that i do for my day-to-day -day job although it varies so wildly um but i actually built an integration to be able to get chat gpt working inside of a chatbot interface namely what's an assistant because that's what your boy does for work so among other things would i ship it internationally yes well i got like I, i'm gonna try to ship it internationally um okay web chat so let me show you this, right? So like I, I built a like a really simple virtual agent and inside of I've basically gone and created a chat GPT2 extension, which inside of what's an assistant is think of it like an automated integration. So you can do like chats with like one of my mates built a chat with like a dad joke generator, but you can also do like some really hardcore stuff. So like if you needed to integrate with Salesforce, with HubSpot, with um, chat GPT. Uh, but a whole bunch of other services you could do that so like whenever people ask me or like whenever a client approaches me and is like hey nick i want a virtual agent i'm like great what's an assistant can do it and then ultimately the next question is can we integrate with x y or z yes because this takes in an open api spec so if you go and type in open api you can literally go and define your api as an open api which basically means that you can if you structure it, your api in the, the right way it makes it really easy to integrate with another bunch of stuff. And like, there's a whole bunch of services that like are on board with this. So Salesforce, IBM, your boys from there, Cisco, like there's a ton. So, and you're probably like, Nick, where do you learn this? You do data science -y stuff. Like this is a big part of what I preach, right? Learn other skills, it's branch out. Um, it, it's only going to make you way more powerful and way stronger and way more progressive in your career. But basically I can actually now go and use chat GPT through this integration i need to go and manage the context and the state and stuff but um yeah i wanted to show you this because um i wanted to give you guys some ideas if you got other projects go and see what else you can integrate it into so i can now go and use my web chat so let's go and drop some of these questions that you've gone and asked so let me show you how this works uh i should really hide myself let me hide myself let me actually just move myself. I've never done this live. This will be interesting to see if this works. But like I've seen some like big YouTubers do it. Uh, like, hey, look, I'm moving. Uh, we've got that little bit on the side. I wonder if I could just, uh, don't worry about it. I'm just going to hide myself. Alrighty, let's take a look at this. So, virtual assistant. How can I help you today? All right, cool. So now I can just go and type in. I can either type it in or I can click, but it, I can go, uh, I want to ask chat GPT something. All right, boom. Take a look. It's then going to say, what would I like to ask? Let's go, let me go find out some of those hilarious ones that you had. Uh, da, 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 what do we say? 
I remember someone saying something about like, why doesn't, it, why don't you love me? Or I'm chat GPT, why my dad left savage. Uh, all right. <laughs> now I feel bad. Um, why doesn't, why doesn't chat GPT love me? All right. We're going to hit yes. So I, I, Included this confirmation just to double check that that's what I wanted it or what they wanted to ask. So this is sending the API request right now. So these little dots indicate that we're reaching out to an extension. Take a look. I always love when it prefixes. As an AI language model, I am incapable of experiencing emotions, including love or its lack thereof. My responses are based solely on the information and context provided to me by the user. Therefore, it is not possible for me to either love or not love someone. I'm here to provide assistance and answer your questions to the best of my abilities. I mean, there's, there's your answer, Ulysses. <laughs> um, but you can start to sort of see like this is kind of what's possible, right? Like and this integration obviously gives you a like a whole lot more power as to what is possible. Couldn't you do a streamlit app with this? Yeah, if you want, like message me in the or like drop some comments on this afterwards if you want me to build a streamlit app let's um let's go on ahead and do it but yeah you probably could what should i keep in the screenshot just show me that you're attending one of the sessions so like i don't know what it's going to look like but just screenshot like i don't know or even like a photo of you on your screen like i'm not going to do anything with the photos it's just so i've got proof that say that you were there um so anything that shows me that you proves that, that you were at one of those sessions then um I'm going to enter you in anyway. All right, cool. All right, so um, let's ask, uh, what else? I can't believe I spelled breakfast wrong, by the way. Um, do, do, do. Where else? Uh, what else do we have inside of this? Summarize papers. What else do we have? Give me some other ideas. Ask chat with GPT for breakfast recommendation. We did that one already. I did. Oh. trying to think um like what's something so uh ask chat gpt what do we want to ask what streaming platform software how do you <laughs> how do you take over humans and which terminator movie does it replicate all right let's give that one a crack actually let's ask like a practical question do you see Let me scroll around here. Do you see AI as a threat to humanity? We're asking the deep questions now. Yes, we're confirming. Drum roll. I need to get like a little drum roll sound effect here. I got like a little, um, MIDI board that I could use. The time goes so quickly when I'm streaming. I never, it's been like 43 minutes. So I was like, it's going to be a short one today. Never is. It's taken a bit of time. Interesting. We'll do, um, David, we'll do your one next. We didn't get a response. I wonder if that was like, um, it would have been interesting to see the error that it threw through. I wonder if it's because it, it's breaching conditions. Let's ask it, um, ask interesting. I'd have to go and dig into that. Ask chat GPT something. Right. Can you write me a Python function to extract M F C C features from a wave let's try that yes you believe in jesus and how did you walk on water <laughs> oh graham that's a low blow just because i didn't do it in the lip net <laughs> i will i will i will i'm gonna i'll fine tune interesting i'm i wonder if what's happening here it's taking a little while now Oh, there we go. There's your response, David. All right. As an AI language model, I cannot access your save model that needs text inputs to generate outputs. 
example code snippet that you can modify to extract. Here's an example code snippet using Librosa. Import Librosa, import NumPy. That looks fine. Extract features. I got to zoom out a little bit. Let me see if I can copy this code. Someone want to go check this? How does this look? Uh, my, uh, I've got to do this in little bunches. Oh, Lord. All right. You can see it there. Anyway, I can't scroll over to... I've got to work out why this is going so far. Looks like it's extracting features. It's cutting off. I need to export the raw format or something, but... There you go. So that is uh, that is my really basic integration of GPT. It took me like two hours to write. I can obviously go and make it a whole bunch better. But um, let's jump back on over to the chat. It's literally like four buttons that I got to click just to transition between this and that. But hopefully you like the new background. I mean, it's a bit of a change from what we did previously. I've still got the breakdown board here. Like there, I've got the, um, the iPad here now. If we ever wanted to go, when we go do some more coding ones, we can go back into that, but I'm probably gonna wrap up soon. But like, drop whatever questions you wanna ask me in the chat, we can, we can talk. Do you think analog computing processes will transform machine learning? Ask it how to write code for the front end chat pod utilizing the chat GPT API. Could I prepare a tutorial for Spark NLP? I haven't actually taken a look at Spark NLP. Um, is that specifically like a PySpark library for NLP? That'd be cool. I don't know. Um, you're a developer, of developing an app for chatting with ChatGPT. Awesome work, Flutter developer. Nick, how am I calling on the Flutter API? Do I have some smaller model to direct each request to the right AI or do you do some pattern matching? Oh, hold on, let me show you how that works. literally so many buttons so the way that this is working over here is that this is actually inside of another bot so i've got entity detection inside of what's an assistant so i use what's an assistant to go and detect what i'm saying and then through this i'll actually route to chat gpt so inside of here I've actually got the ability to go and call my extension. So right down here, I actually go and tell it to go and call the open AI, um, the open AI endpoint. So it all goes through there. Um, yeah, this video will all go out onto the World Wide Web. So I normally just release the, the replay of the live stream so you can pick it up later. How would I automate the user and assistant conversation? I think Willie, so I would just be taking whatever response I get back and I'd store it inside of a variable inside of what's an assistant so that I could repass it back through to here. So when I actually go and set this up, let me show you. So I'm actually storing the question. Can I make this bigger? I can't, um, but I'm actually storing the question. Let me show it to you inside of VS code. So inside of my virtual agent, I'm actually storing it the question as a temporary variable so i can grab it whenever i need but if i wanted to go and stack it i would have to go and append to that variable but definitely possible to do that so um i would just be creating a new set of dictionaries each and every time i want to go and, and save that state back to chatting Alrighty, cool. Yeah, no, th this video will go out automatically as soon as um, as soon as the live stream ends. It normally just automatically posts to to YouTube, so you can pick it up. But um, hopefully, you guys have enjoyed this live stream. I'm going to be wrapping it up um, pretty soon. Um, and remember to go and check it out, so you guys can win a GPU. I got to get it out of my house because right now it's taking up so much room. It's literally sitting in my kitchen, kitchen-ish kind of at the moment. Um, Hopefully you've enjoyed this and also double check uh, or just, like I'll notify you guys once the Python course is out pretty soon so you can go and get started with that as well. So hopefully it'll help you get started on your journey to machine learning. Plus I've also included a couple of funny stories about my journey to getting started with coding and machine learning. So you can check that out as well. Anyway, love you guys. Thank you so much for coming and checking out the stream. I will catch you in the next one. Peace.